If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. We have the hearing on the preliminary injunctive relief request within the complaint for injunction. Yeah. Your pleadings will be read with precision, so you need not go over each and every point contained within the If you haven't, no reference in your own profits today. You haven't waived it it's in your pleadings. Counsel, I assume you understand that? Yes, sir. Mr. Silva, you understand the same as well? Okay, so if it's in your pleadings, if you don't mention today, you haven't waived it. I'm going to take into account your pleas for render precision. So that being said, you can be seated for a moment, sir. Offer proof and support of uh, your request for preliminary relief. Yes, sir. Your Honor, Michael Sylvia is the owner of property located at 216 Sparrow Road in Belmont, New Hampshire. Your Honor, the owner of property located at 216 Sparrow Road in Belmont, New Hampshire. In 2009, there was a fire at the property. That fire destroyed the house and also to the town's information relief destroyed the septic system. And in fact, in 2014, when the assessor went out to the property, Mr. Sylvia did acknowledge to the assessor that he had bought property that the septic system was damaged and needed to be replaced. The remaining on the property, and you see photographs attached to my um, objection to the motion to dismiss, the remaining on the property is a garage um, and also located on the property's recreational vehicle. It appears to the town that Mr. Sylvia is living at the property in the garage in the winter. Objection, Your Honor. Answer based to objection. Right. Your Honor, the um, the information on which that is based uh, is sworn to by the uh, motion officer, and he has no knowledge. And of course, the attorney has no knowledge. So uh, that would be hearsay. Evidence that that is not in dispute. Counsel, your response. Is he here? Here, and I was going to get to it. overruled. We may continue. And for the record, Mr. Payton, the building inspector, is here at the point of that. Um, the reason the town believes that Mr. Sylvia is residing at the property is, A, he is represented to the voters of Belmont County that that is where he lives, and he's also represented to the court in his pleadings that that is at least his mailing address. Moreover, um, in the winter, there is smoke coming from the wood stove in the garage, as well as shovel hats, which demonstrate that someone is using the property and um, presumably residing in it. In addition, when the assessor visited the property in 2014, Mr. Sylvia did come out of the recreational vehicle um, where we assume he was living. There are no permits for the occupancy of the RV. There are no permits for the conversion of the garage space into any sort of living space. Um, and also very important, Your Honor, there's no record of a properly installed and functioning septic system on the property, although we moved the tobacco in the um, So we've got illegal occupancy because there's no uh, permits and also because there's no functioning septic system. This is a violation of the town's uh, zoning ordinance and state of the country building code and state environmental laws and regulations. Mr. Sylvia was advised of these violations on several occasions, and again, these letters are Your Honor. Stand on your objection, sir. Face your objection. Uh, your Honor, the uh, claim that uh, I have been advised or properly noticed is uh, a point of strong opposition and to state it on the record that I have been the uh, uh, county response. Your Honor, there are four letters that I was about to identify to the court that explain how he was advised. Objections overruled. Continue, counsel. Your Honor, the four letters are attached to our response to the town's jurisdiction and objection to the motion to dismiss. They are letters from the town dated August 16th, 2017, December 5th, 2017, March 5th, 2018, and a letter from me dated May 1, 2018. And as I look through them, at least three of them were sent to certified, and there's evidence of the delivery. In addition, Your Honor, in paragraph three of the complaint, um, the town sets forth exactly what the um, alleged violations are. Um, Mr. Sylvia did respond to uh, at least one of these letters from the town and the letter from me. Um, and his objection was, um, he asserts that the government is instituted to protect the rights of the people. He further asserted that his liberty to use his property ought to be protected by the town. His use of his property is in no way harming any other inhabitants, and as such, his use of the property is within the protection of the Constitution of the United States. Based on that, the town assumed that he was not willingly going to come into compliance and filed a petition with this court seeking both preliminary and permanent injunctive relief, as well as civil penalties and attorney's fees. 
Your Honor, Pat Nam is entitled to preliminary injunctive relief, ordering that Mr. Sylvia cease the illegal occupancy of the garage and the recreational vehicle immediately, and or apply for the required permits for this use, because the town has established that he has violated town and state law, and there is a cognizable danger of recurrent violations based on his response. The town has no action for the law, and will likely succeed in the jurisdiction. Thank you, Counsel. Mr. Sylvia, your response, sir. You can stand there, sir, as long as you speak into that mic or whatever. You can use the podium, whatever you wish, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, my response is the town has not advised <coughs> me of the exact um, statute in which they claim that I am uh, in violation of. Um, all of this follows the public health and safety statutes and as best I can determine uh, under under RSA 155 colon 1 uh, the bylaws for the town which would I suggest um, the town ordinances are following uh, state that a building is, is a public building and no buildings on my private property are public buildings. So the application of whatever unspecified uh, violations uh, I was unable to comprehend, I need to uh, assume, and of course, back in basic training, I was told what that means, it's nothing but trouble. So, my replies to the uh, town were that the, the claim they had made did not um, state what the problem was and in specificity such that I would be able to cure it. Uh, so I would like to speak to the uh, first challenge of jurisdiction being that if one looks through and because I was not told specifically which code I was in violation of it would seem that we belong in district court under a cease and desist order of course that is an assumption I had to make because I was not properly advised and of course under RSA 676.17-a, cease and desist orders. Um, little d requires a statement that a motion for some reinforcement of the order shall be made to the court of the district in which the property is situated. Furthermore, it also helps us understand what actual notice is in what I assume is the type of property violation that the town is looking at. And under Roman 1, little a, the precise regulation, provision, specification, or condition which is being violated. The fact constituting the violation including the date of any inspection from which these facts were ascertained. Now, the prosecution plaintiff <coughs> has not been on property to inspect anything. They are making assumptions from observations outside the uh, property. Um, there are large questions frequently fought and conquered over terms like residency, domicile, uh, occupancy, and uh, some of these things are defined and some of them are not, such as uh, building, which seems to come under RSA 155, colon 1, or section 155 of the codes. Further, in my motion to dismiss, uh, I won't reiterate the cease and desist order.
right here. Pardon me, Your Honor. You want to give that gentleman his glasses back? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, further under uh, Hi. Uh, the um, oh, sorry, Your Honor. Wrong, sir. Uh, the uh, affidavit signed uh, by uh, the building inspector has an error in it. Uh, Hi. Apparently, due diligence was not done, and it states uh, by knowledge and belief as opposed to unique. And under in the actual complaint, oh. there are statements that are made as facts, which are not facts. Uh, particularly, uh, <coughs> my living in the RV, um, he has no knowledge of that. He has no knowledge that I lived in uh, a garage. Uh, he has no knowledge of any improvements to uh, the garage as a dwelling unit. Uh, dwelling unit, again, is uh, a word or a phrase that I do not find uh, any specific definition of. And lastly, uh, Your Honor, I think uh, I can end here, hopefully. Um, the defendant, Mike Silvia is a man uh, and not a legal entity. So, depending on whether one is a man, a uh, person, or a natural person, and those things are defined uh, in various ways in various statutes, uh, I still uh, stand behind the, the Constitution, which is put in place by the people to defend the rights of the people, and particularly Article 2 uh, provides all men have certain natural, essential, and inherent rights, among which are the enjoyment of defending life and liberty, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and in a word of seeking and obtaining happiness. Yeah. And when a statute seems to be in conflict with our Constitution, then our Constitution is the ultimate law. And Hello. make sure I am done. Your Honor, excuse me. 
but in fact, if he's put under oath, any consent or anything he says may be used against him. Is that correct? If he were put under oath and he were to lie, he would be liable for perjury. And if he's put under oath and he testifies truthfully, then yes, that truth might be used against him in this civil proceeding. But that's not checked by the Mr. Sylvia, what's your position about being called as a witness in reference to this matter, sir? Thank you, Your Honor. I object to being called, and I further claim my protections under the 50th Amendment or Article to the New Hampshire Constitution, and specifically privileges him not to answer official questions put to him in any other proceeding, civil or criminal, formal or informal, where the answers might incriminate him in future criminal proceedings. And that is from Knowles v. Warden, 1995. Thank you. Any further reference to request, counsel? The only way this would threaten him in a future criminal proceeding is if he were to lie. Other than that, there is no threat of that. Okay, at this point, are you aware of the standard on the U.S. v. Hoffman as adopted by both State v. Richards and State v. Wheeler? No, Your Honor. To direct that, in fact, a witness testify after he's invoked his constitutional amendment or his constitutional rights, it must be perfectly clear from the record, considering all circumstances, that there is no way that he could, in fact, incriminate himself. That standard has not been met. I'm going to, in fact, deny your request. Anything else, counsel? I'd like to argue the motion to dismiss and the motion for jurisdiction that Mr. Sylvia argued. Okay, you may proceed. You can be seated, Mr. Sylvia. You're not going to be called to testify. Continue, counsel. Your Honor, Mr. Sylvia objects to this court's jurisdiction, alleging that this should have been brought into district court pursuant to RSA 67617A. Of course, the town could have brought this into district court pursuant to RSA 67617A, but it chose not to. It chose to proceed in this court under RSA 67615 and 67617 because this court has injunctive authority where the district court does not. This court has jurisdiction on this matter. As for the claim, the motion to dismiss is based on the claim that he's never been advised of the conditions or actions of which the town complains. I would point, Your Honor, to the letters that are attached to the objection to the motion to dismiss, and particularly the March 17, 2018 letter, which not only specifies the factual basis for the violations, but also each and every portion of the town zoning ordinance, the State of New Hampshire Building Code, which does apply pursuant to RSA 155A21, all buildings, building components, and structures constructed in New Hampshire shall comply with the State Building Code and State Fire Code, as well as the Department of Environmental Service rules that are being violated. The response, Your Honor, was not that Mr. Sylvia couldn't understand the violations that were being alleged. The response was that the letter fails to state a claim upon which relief may be granted, and goes on to specifically say that he's not going to allow the town to schedule an inspection of the property. I'd like to submit this to the Senate, Your Honor, if I may. Any objection that be submitted as an exhibit for purpose of this hearing only if you mark this petition as one, Mr. Sylvia? No, Your Honor. Okay, would you mark that, please? You've got a copy, Mr. Sylvia, as well? He has a copy of it because he sent it. I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. For the foregoing reasons, Your Honor, the town asks that you grant this preliminary injunction, that you find that you do have jurisdiction, and that you do not have jurisdiction. Thank you, Counsel. Mr. Sylvia, we've now moved on to your motion to dismiss, which you wrote in your earlier offer. Do you have something you wish to add or emphasize in reference to your motion to dismiss or your response to the State's objection to say? Your Honor, given the affidavit signed by the Code Enforcement Officer, I believe that it would be proper to get him on record for the claims that he has knowledge of my living or converting the garage into a dwelling unit or living in the recreational vehicle. So I would like to call the Code Enforcement Officer to testify. Thank you. Thank you, Counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Counsel. Thank you, Counsel. Thank you, Counsel. Thank you,
you want to do. Your position, counsel? That's the motion to the list. It goes to the preliminary injunction, but I certainly have no objection to it. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Who is this gentleman's name? This is Steve Cagley, the counsel. Okay, Mr. Cagley, you come right up here. <coughs> Remain standing if you would and raise your right hand. Spread and tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and some piece of perjury. Yes, you may be seated, sir, to provide both your name and your address. My name is Steve Bakery. I'm the code enforcement officer for the town of Belmont. My residence is 25 Canyon Road, Union, Union, Union. Proceed, Mr. Sylvia. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Baker, you uh, have read the complaint against me. Yes, you make a statement the property is being used in violation of state and town regulations, of which the Belmont Board of Selectmen is the enforcing authority. You do not state in particularity what violations you claim. Is there a reason that you would not make those particular claims? Objection, Your Honor. The complaint in paragraph two does say it's being used in violation of town and state regulations. Paragraph three sets forth the facts on which side is based. And paragraph four does cite to the Belmont Zoning Ordinance the State of New Hampshire Building Code and state environmental laws and regulations. So I just want that clear for the record. Your response, Mr. Uh, Sylvia? Sorry, I don't have any response. Key objection sustained. Your next question. Uh, Ms. Spigman, uh, in uh, paragraph three, you state. Can I give him a copy? It would help if he had a copy. I assume you have no objection, Mr. Silver. Okay. If you provide a copy of the witness, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, counsel. Proceed, sir. Thank you. Uh, so, paragraph three, we claim knowledge of my occupying a recreational vehicle in the summer. On what knowledge, grounds, or evidence would you present that you have that knowledge, that I live in RV in the summer? There's documentation on file in the town hall that states that the assessor was out there and that you came out of the RV to speak with him while he was on your property. And then previous drive-bys, as I collect my information, shows that there's been lights on and activity in the RV at the time. Does a person coming out of an RV indicate that they live there? Or occupying it? It does not. But there's been enough evidence to say that that RV on the property with no legal residence oh God, can be assumed that there is residence going on inside that RV. Objection, Your Honor. He's making conclusions. You responded to your question. Your next question. Thank you, Your Honor. You say that I'm residing in the garage in the winter. What facts give you knowledge that I did such? There's smoke coming out of the chimney in the winter. There's shovel path going through the property in the winter. Your car is residing in the driveway throughout the entire year. Again, put the facts together, it appears that somebody is living in that garage. Is that any more than a conclusion? Is that evidence? Mr. Pakeman is not a legal expert. He testifies to what he observed, which is the evidence we are presenting to the court. Your Honor, your response, sir. The, uh, Mr. Pakeman is a professional code enforcement officer, and he should have a higher uh, standard in his knowledge. Of the building code, certainly, but not of the law. Jackson sustained. The next question, sir. Mr. Pakeman, are you familiar with RSA 155? Uh, the section on 
public, safe, public safety and welfare, factories, tenements, schoolhouses, and places of public accommodation. I go up it, but without having it in front of me, I would not see it from you. Are you, are you certified to deliver a, uh, a warrant to get a cease and desist order under RSA 676 colon 17-8? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance. We're not proceeding under RSA 676 Relevance, Mr. Sylvia. Your Honor, the witness knows that there is the procedure to get a cease and desist order, and that is evidenced by the uh, January 8th town selectmen's meeting, where they discussed uh, the possibility of having a law enforcement officer or a firefighter who is properly certified uh, seeing such a warrant. That doesn't make it any more relevant, huh? Any further reference to the question of relevance, Mr. Sealy? I'm sorry? Any other thing further in response to the uh, petition subject? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. The objection sustained. Your next question, sir. Under what statute or town ordinance is a person required to have an RV on their property? statute that requires someone to have an RV on their property? Uh, uh, I'm sorry if that no was problem. there. Uh, What's your question? Under what statute is a person required to have a permit to have an RV on their property? Okay. Thank you, sir. You understand the question, sir? Yes. That requirement to have a permit or the time that you're allowed to have an RV on your property is covered under Article 8 of the Town of Belmont Zoning Ordinance? Is that uh, zoning ordinance referring to campgrounds or private property? So you just referring to private property. Objection to mine. I don't believe that is the case from what I was hearing. <laughs> well, at this point, you asked the question, he responded. I mean, it's, there is no objection, at least there's an objection I would sustain. So continue, sir. So in uh, paragraph four, you state generally towns zoning ordinances, the state of the building code, and the state environmental laws. Did you present myself with those statutes prior to March? Uh, I did not, Your Honor. Uh, I did not. The first letter asked that we have a meeting to discuss the violations that I believe to be on your property. And yeah. it has continued on. That I got response letters from you, and you got another letter from me that led up to the March 17th letter, where we are today. And I required to have a meeting with you. Did you contact my office? Is there any Excuse, me. Excuse me. The way it works is he'll ask the question. Okay. I'm sorry. You answer. If you don't know, then we can't say it. Okay? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Your question, sir. <laughs> Did your letter of August 16th, 2017 state any specific violation? No, I did not. Strictly stated that I was asked by the selectman to pursue possible violations on your property and asked him to have a meeting. 
did the selectmen know that you could pursue a cease and desist, cease and desist order? Objection, Your Honor, Mr. Mr. Caitlin can't testify to what the selectmen may have done that. Do you respond, sir? Can I rephrase the question? So you're withdrawing that question. All right. Okay, the question is withdrawn. Your next question. <coughs> Did you discuss with the select board seeking a cease and desist order? On your property, no, I did not. In your letter of December 5th, 2017, did you state any particular violation Did that letter state what cure was needed? At that point, it does not. It's, it's the letter stating that that's what I believe. And again, I'm asking you in that letter to contact my office so that we can discuss the violations on the property. So that letter did not have a precise regulation, provision, specification, or condition stated? No, it did not. Did it present facts constituting the violation, including the date of any inspection? It did not. Did your letter of March 27th, did you state that it appears to be a violation? states that it is in regarding potential violations on your property. Potential. And the letter goes on to ask for a meeting with you. In your letter of March 27th, did it state a precise regulation, provision, specification, or condition which is being violated? since there's been substantial questioning reference these letters that they be marked as full exhibits. So I assume you have no objections since you've been asking about them. No objections. Okay, that being the case, you have four letters that in fact... They are attached to my objection, but I will give you my copies as well. No, it's okay if they're attached to your objection. They're attached to your objection. understanding though that those are exhibits for purpose of this hearing. Yes, sir. Okay, that being the case, the documents do speak for themselves, so I'm going to read the documents since they are now not only attached to the uh, pleading from the petitioner, but also they have full exhibits. Do you have any other questions of this witness, Mr. Sidney? Yes, Mr. Pickwick, did you receive any complaints from a citizen on my property? I did not receive a complaint, no. Can you tell me what uh, caused you to come uh, investigate my property? Your Honor, I object on the basis of relevance. It doesn't matter why the town is at the property. The relevance, Mr. Sylvia? Your Honor, selective uh, prosecution of uh, the zoning ordinances in town um, is a general problem. Objection sustained. The next question, sir. Thanks. Did you have any discussions with the Board of Selectmen about inspecting my property um, prior to the first letter in August. When I first came to the town in 2012, your property came up as one of the ones that had potential violations with it. I was asked by the selectmen to pursue the more predominant violations that we had in town at the time. How many violations in town were there at the time? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance? Sustained. Continue. Mr. Bigwood? 
Did you have any discussions with the board of selectmen um, of a political nature regarding my property? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance. Relevance, Mr. Sylvia. Your Honor, I have been accused of felonies, a lot of things attached to the person of uh, Representative Mike Sylvia. And there is a political nature to the pursuit of zoning violations. Any further reference to your objection, Council? Objection sustained. Continue. When you signed the affidavit behind this complaint, did you read the affidavit? Yes, I did. Did you understand the word believe to be wrong? Which is supposed to be? Belief. Okay, belief as opposed to believe. Yes. I'm so noted. Let's move on, Mr. Silva. Your Honor, I believe that is all the questions I have. Thank you, sir. Any questions of this witness, counsel? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. So you can step down. That being the case, then, as I I believe that runs the parameters of the issues before the court. So I'm going to take under advisement the request of the petitioner for preliminary injunctive release or relief. I'm also going to take under advisement the defendant's motion to dismiss and the petitioner's objection to say, by way of explanation to you, Mr. Sylvia, when I say take under advisement, I'm going to take a look at all the pleadings, again, as I indicated with precision, what was stated today and the five exhibits that have been introduced. That is the four letters as well as the earlier exhibit that's placed to the number one dealing with a letter apparently from you dated um, 425 2018. So I believe that again is the issues before the court. Can we accomplish anything else today? Your Honor, we have a, copy, a full copy of the zoning ordinance if you are interested in having a copy of that from the file. I assume you have no objection to having a copy of saying that will be then marked as a plain exhibit as well. We'll mark that as plain exhibit number. We had four letters in one, plain exhibit six, of course.